Today we're going to be diving into the world of quant trading. It's an incredibly mysterious yet lucrative career and it's something that a lot of people have heard about but don't really know anything about. For today's video, I got the chance to interview someone who's been in the industry for over a decade. They've asked to stay completely anonymous, which is for the best because this way they don't have to sugarcoat anything and they can talk about what the job is actually really like. Let's dive straight into it. So how did you end up in quant trading? In college, they had a really big presence at career fairs. They'd given some TED Talks and hosted dinners, that kind of thing. Um, they were a fairly popular recruiting target when I was an undergrad. I learned about them at a few of those and ultimately did a summer internship before my full-time offer. Got it. And what did you study when you were an undergrad? I studied math and comp sci, which was fairly common. Okay, that sounds pretty typical. And how many years have you been in this role? About 13 years now. So when he started the role, what surprised you the most? It really surprised me how useful Linux or command line knowledge was. I mean, basic command line tools like awk and grep. I spent a lot of time learning how to work with real code bases as opposed to smaller college projects. So stuff like Git, regression testing, cogen, etc. This was before VS Code and language server protocols made development tooling much nicer, so the ramp up is probably easier these days. So did you always know you wanted to go into finance? Definitely not. I didn't even really know about these types of jobs until starting college. Like a lot of people, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I initially had vague notions of a PhD or med school, but then I got a lot more interested in finance and tech. So if you weren't doing quant trading, what do you think you would have ended up doing? Probably tech. What does your day-to-day -day actually look like? I think it's somewhat like an academic research environment with an open-ended goal of making more money. At any time, you might be juggling a few different projects. There aren't too many meetings, maybe a couple regular weekly ones with a few one-offs. Other times, you might be working on deploying, monitoring, or reconciling live trading strategies. I'd say most of the time, you're just spending it on research or testing ideas. So what that involves is usually coding and submitting compute jobs and a smaller amount of time actually analyzing the results from those tests. So depending on how long the jobs take, and that could be anywhere from minutes to hours to days, Sometimes I would switch to another work stream while I'm waiting or just take a breather. And if it's after market hours and I'm waiting, I might just go and use the in-house gym. So what's the difference between quant traders, quant researchers, and quant developers? That's a good question and it's something a lot of people ask. I'd say there isn't necessarily a standardized meaning and it kind of varies from place to place. As some places might hire everyone under the title quant trader, but I would say there's two ends of the spectrum when it comes to a quant developer versus a quant researcher. Um, for a quant developer at least, the hiring profile might not look too different from a software engineer at Google or just any other tech company. You'd be working on the overall tech stack, but perhaps with more emphasis on low latency programming in a language like C++, although there are also roles for Python developers or the like. You might also be working on exchange related things like market data parsing and order entry protocols. Now for a quant researcher, quantitative skills like predictive modeling and statistics are much more emphasized. This is also more of the revenue generating role, so they're the ones coming up with and testing training strategies. So it also involves a little bit more of an understanding of markets, so things like asset classes, exchange microstructures, macro trends, etc. And a lot of people honestly might fit into a hybrid combination of the two. Sometimes researchers are writing market data parsers while developers work on minimizing some portfolio risk. What kind of people tended to do well in this role? Um, so obviously you have to be quantitatively strong. Almost as important as that though is being a very practical problem solver with a creative slash hacker mentality. That means being able to dive into the nitty gritty details of existing strategies as well as a willingness to try new and possibly even unlikely ideas. It definitely helps to be a strong coder. I've seen very smart math PhDs struggle if they're only able to work with high level notebooks compared to the ones who can read and write lower level code. 
So how much of the job was actually coding versus market intuition versus math? Um, it varies a bit based on your own strengths. I'd say it's about 60 to 80% coding, 10 to 20% market intuition, and also 10 to 20% math. So would you say it was more collaborative or siloed for the culture? It was collaborative within the silo or the teams themselves, and the extent of that would vary by firm. Got it. And what were the hours and the pace really like? Um, again, that also varies a lot by firm, but it's more about getting stuff done in the set hours than really about any kind of face time. So there have been times where I've been in the office for 12 plus hours or worked on weekends, but I'd say on average, you can generally expect about 10 hours, five days a week. Okay, that's not too bad. Is it true that new grads can make 500k or more in their first year? And is that rare or common? I think that's standard for top tier firms these days. And what was the highest comp you've made or have heard of someone making? Eight figures. And if someone stayed for five to six years, what kind of range could they expect to be at? So it completely depends on how much P&L you contribute and how much the firm makes. It could be pretty much the same as your starting salary or it could be 10x more than that. And did you ever hit a number that surprised you? Yeah, the number I. I didn't know numbers could be imaginary. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about how you break into this role. What was the interview process like? So there were one to two on-campus rounds before an on-site, and each of those contain a mix of quantitative, market-related, and coding questions. Quant trading Interviews have a reputation of having super difficult math problems that only geniuses can solve, but in actuality, being an IMO medalist is definitely not necessary or honestly even sufficient. Okay, interesting. So, what advice would you give to someone who's trying to break in today, especially if they don't come from a top school or have a PhD? So top firms almost exclusively hire new grads from target schools. That list is a lot broader these days than back when I was an undergrad. For experienced hires, they target people with expertise in relevant fields. This includes low latency developers, including FPGA and microwave engineers, experienced network slash system slash kernel developers, as well as high performance computer and administrators. For researchers, they might look at cutting edge machine learning PhDs, i.e. academics with top journal publications. I don't know how one would necessarily break in from an unrelated job. And how did people stand out during the interview process? Were there any specific green flags or red flags? So basically what we talked about before about what kinds of people tend to do well in the role, that's hard to evaluate in a short interview. So mostly you just look for someone who's sharp and able to pick things up quick. This is correlated, but not exactly aligned with working through tricky maths and stats problems, as well as just people who can get stuff done, which is again, correlated, but not exactly aligned with practical coding challenges. And final question for me, do you think someone could break into quant trading now just by grinding leak code and reading quant books? I'd say if you're in school studying a related field, you're better off focusing on the relevant coursework and doing some practice interviews. Oftentimes there are campus clubs or groups that have helpful resources. If you're not in school, I suppose it's possible, but if you have the ability and the willpower to do so, you'd probably have a much better ROI putting that effort into something else. Maybe just go back to school and do a PhD. Well, thank you so much for your time. That was super helpful. Of course, it was a pleasure. So hopefully this video helped with demystifying a little bit of what the quant trading world looks like. If you have any questions down below for me to pass to the interviewee, please let me know and I can pass it along for you. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if there are any other careers that you'd like to learn more about or people who you want me to interview, drop them down in the comment section below. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.